welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. This is presented by our friends at Show X. We're here at the beautiful Cutting Room in Midtown Manhattan today with Stephen Kellogg. Stephen Kellogg, thank you for doing this, man. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to be here for a little uh, midday afternoon delight. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna fire up uh, a song I released last month. Um, uh, it's one. It's the. It's the only song that I recorded in 2020, uh, and because of all the, all the stuff that's going on, we gave ourselves eight hours. I said to the band, "We have eight hours. Wherever we're at, after eight hours is what we'll put out." And I'm not going to overthink this one. And and that felt like the spirit of last year. So uh, it's called "I've Had Enough." Showers in late summer Staring up at space I guess we're not alone In all this chaos we create Running after every rabbit Taking all the bait if everyone is always right, then what is there to say? I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. That doesn't mean I'm giving. That doesn't mean I'm giving up. I try to be on my best behavior Most of the time it's hard When it feels like a lie If it's coming for us We anticipate the scars I'm still learning when to speak my mind When to keep it to myself Cause your faith is your faith Unless your faith is a threat to someone else I've had enough I've had enough I've had enough That doesn't mean I'm giving That doesn't mean I'm giving up Get me off this road Thank you. Uh, man, so in addition to, uh, you said that that was, you, you get eight hours and that's, that's the amount of time you set that parameter on yourself. Um, in, in addition to uh, like a production constraint that you put on yourself, can you talk about uh, some of the ways that the lyrical content and just the vibe of your songs has changed over the course of the last, you know, year since everything has been totally upside down? What are sure. the sort of vibes and feelings that you, you tend to, to find yourself writing about? Well, you know, honestly, I didn't find myself writing very much. And, and, and I had to laugh because initially everybody's sending out these like COVID challenges, like don't eat pasta or, you know, work out. And I'm like, I don't need any additional challenges or things to think <laughs> about here. Like I'm, I'm doing the homeschool challenge. I'm doing the 
tech every day challenge. Um, yeah, the non-artificially imposed challenge that's yeah, already right yeah. there in front of yeah, you. Yeah, I think we're all set on challenges, but thank you. You know, um, and and I didn't really, I didn't find myself writing much at all. But as the as the year wore on, you know, I, I spent a lot, so much time angry at, at, at you know. I just I just woke up angry every day and frustrated and just knowing how many people were in so much pain and my own frustration with the way things were being handled and sort of where we had come to and having always been an artist that that was much more known for heartfelt songs and songs about family and stuff like that my notebooks just started to fill with edgy frustrated edgier stuff and it's it's not that I'm afraid to put that out in the world I just didn't feel like it would help it didn't feel like it was helping anything to be like and I'm angry too you know I mean sometimes it just leaks out my pores but I, I so I, I was trying to find something I could say that would still feel hopeful but would also sort of acknowledge and honor what I was experiencing myself. And so um, my friend Eric Donnelly, who plays in my band, and he's in, he's in a great band called The Alternate Roots. And he and I sat down, I said, I'd love to write about what I'm feeling, because that's usually what I do, but I'd, I don't want to just spew, you know? And so, um, and so we wrote that song, and I didn't really still think I would record that or anything. And, and my, my manager uh, and, and a few folks that had heard it on some virtual shows really encouraged, like, if you're not going to cut this now, then when would you cut it? And I thought that's true. You know, it's sort of a marker in time. So I don't think the vibe of my songs has changed. And, I, you know, I look forward to sort of getting back into the the day-to-day -day matters of the heart. But it does feel good to have written about something that I don't usually write about, you know? Yeah, well, dude, thank you for a, a bit of a peek behind the curtain on your, your editing process and the, and the collaboration process with Eric. I mean, that's, um, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think that all of those choices that you guys made were, were, were wise decisions. That song came out. It certainly didn't come out as, this is me spewing anger or frustration. I think that you wrote that line very well. So thanks for sharing it with us today. Awesome, man. Well, thank you, Brad. Yeah, thanks of course, this. man. This, what is my you... first, this is my first time actually playing it uh, not in my sound studio in my basement so it's it feels like any new song feels you're like what are the chords what's happening <laughs> but, what's up with all this space why is the ceiling 20 feet know. high and then even though it's you know it's our audience of, of our our, the, our three crew here but it's feels feels like a i feel like i might as well be playing you know msg here to have somebody <laughs> clap when you're finished is just a Luxury. Well, we do. The, the internet is happy right now. We've got a good crew, go, a good uh, crowd tuned in on the other side of these lenses. So, uh, well, so I thanks for doing this. And there's there's a lot more. There's a lot more of your music to be shared with uh, with that big crowd. What's coming up second today? Yeah. So uh, what I've decided, I'm going to play the complete released works of 2020 on this session. I'm going to play them in order. But this isn't. This is an old song uh, that we finally just put out. Um, and this is a, we had had a, we had had a miscarriage in, in 2009 and it's one of those disappointing things that happens in life that you don't realize the amount of people that go through that until it happens to you. And, um, and I was on the road uh, when it happened and we were near Memphis, uh, Tennessee and so we were looking for a studio and someone said, what about Sun Studio? And so we went into Sun Studio and you can only work at night because it's a museum during the day. And a young Matt Ross Spang, who's gone on to engineer just fabulous albums recently for Jason Isbell and a whole, a whole host of others, but he was there, he was the engineer at the time. Uh, and we just went in and, and also rec and recorded this song uh, and um, and I remember being really touched because at the end of the night, Matt said, "Look, no charge." He had, you know, kind of got the vibe of what I was singing about, and um, and it had been in a can for about ten years. And uh, this year, 
uh, I just thought, well, why don't we take all our lumps at once? If the, if the world's in pain, let's let's speak to that, you know. And so this one's called Ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna t I'm gonna tune because I can, and I'm a because I'm a pro, and I can. A hundred percent, man. And it's always, always the right call. We appreciate you taking the time to do it, as does the internet. I am positive of it. Well, how can we not? Okay, yeah, here we go. I get a little bit sad Between awake and asleep I dream of what we never had The whisper of a child that got away Give your mama a rose from my bouquet A ghost, ghost an ache in my chest It still hurts the most How could it be for the best man? A ghost, ghost You took a piece of me But the, the Lord knows it was yours to keep A week later I was leaving some things still left unsaid Machines and anesthesia And the opaque look of a hospital bed And I did some drinking I'm not gonna lie Trying to move on Trying to make it all right A ghost, ghost An in my chest It still hurts the most How could it be for the best And ghost, ghost You took a piece of me But the, the Lord knows It was yours to keep And it's yours to keep now It is yours to keep now It is yours to keep now And it's time to sleep now As I lay me down Ghost, ghost, an ache in my chest yours to keep now thank you guys thank, thank you, you steven man so last time we crossed paths was i forget if it was 2017 or 2018 but a couple years ago and uh, objects in the mirror was the was the album you were touring on at that time which uh, this has been in my collection since then so thank you for giving me this this was the the vinyl itself and then a uh, an album program guide that came along with it which is just a tremendously cool way to uh, to let people into your world and show show what's going on behind the scenes during the recording process I know that there is it out right now or just about to come out. There's a new book. July, it, it came out in July, obviously, a, a sort of a release date plan uh, prior to, uh, you know, knowledge of what 2020 was going to look like. But, yeah, there, uh, it's a book. Uh, it's called Objects in the Mirror, Thoughts on a Perfect Life from an Imperfect Person. And it's a, a collection of essays and, uh, you know, anecdotes about sort of the stuff that I've... Uh, what I, the best stuff that I've learned so far in my life, you know? 
and uh, you try to infuse it with enough um, good humor to uh, and just kind of say, here's some mistakes I've made, and and maybe you you can pick up something from that and and improve your own experience, you know, for for reading it. Yeah. Do you do you feel like maybe giving a sample of one like synopsizing a, a bit of hilarity or a bit of uh, uh, well, a, a sure. misstep that you made? <laughs> hilarity. I I can't promise hilarity. I'm like. <laughs> We move from miscarriages to hilarity <laughs> in one fell swoop here on the, at, at, well, on your afternoon lunch break. But um, no, I mean, you know, look, so, so the book is sort of, it, it's comprised, you've got a series of essays and the first part of the book is all about relationships. So it, it's about marriage and friendships and heroes and parents, and kids, all that stuff. And, um, you know, I, I I've told this story before, but my wife, who is my best friend, and I love her, and it's great, but when I think of marriage, you know, I think sometimes we think of, of romance and a wedding and all that, and, and yet one of the stories that I elaborate on, uh, in on the chapter about marriage is one day when my wife said, you're such a dick, and I said, well, do you think I'm a dick or do you think I'm acting like a dick? And, you know, which she really appreciates me making the distinction. But I said, yeah, you know, I yeah, want to understand the distinction. The and, and so, because there is a difference, you know. Uh, there's a difference between going about your business in the world and being a dick and just acting like a dick. I think we all kind of act like a dick on a daily basis at some point in some way. And that's okay, but you don't want to be a dick. And so, anyway... What ensued was was this big, you know, conversation, and uh, and for Christmas this year she bought me a big sign that says "Don't be a dick." That that now <laughs> when I play my shows it just hangs there like above like this this reminder. But um, you know, so much uh, I I wouldn't trade my life with anybody, but so much of what has happened is not anything you would ever script for yourself, you know. Um, and so that's a lot of what I try to, to, to ex explore in the book. The second part of the book is more, uh, you know, concepts that I think are important. Forgiveness and legacy. What do you want people to remember you for? Um, you know, integrity. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the stories that I share about integrity was... Uh, one of the last record labels that I was on getting in this whole thing where they said, you got to give us something we can get on the radio. So I end up out in L.A. writing with this hotshot guy. And we basically write a ripoff. And it gets all the way to, like, being released. And then it really becomes clear that it is a ripoff. And I have, like, a Jerry Maguire moment where I was like, I, I, I can't release this song. This is... And so we withdrew it and everything, and my manager called and said, you know, you're probably going to get dropped over this. Sure. And, and ultimately, it was not the reason, but certainly a catalyst for bringing my band of 10 years to a close. I mean, it, it really what, it did cause a lot of destruction. And you would never say, oh, I want this to be something I want to go through. But if I had to look back at a moment that I'm the most proud of in some ways, it was that moment of saying, I won't do this. I shouldn't have done that, but I won't move forward with it, you know? And so telling that story, I thought this could be useful to someone because sometimes, because that, that moment had the, it had the potential to be a, a professional low point, you know, but instead it became a real point of pride. Um, and writing about that, and sharing that with people, it helped me kind of close that chapter. And, and, I, and I think and the hope is that the book could help others too. So, you know, um, stuff like that. That gives nice. you a little bit of a sense of what's in the book. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing, man. I cannot wait. I know my copy is just, a, just, just about to be at, at home. I'm going to be the owner of it potentially today. And I'm very much looking forward to, to what's in that book. Thanks for sharing a, a oh, yeah. bit of what's in it with the live stream today and the music as well. And there's still quite a bit more of it. What, it's, what's, uh, what do you feel like playing third so today? So I'm just going to, I'm going to, I would never put these three songs in order 
at a show, but I'm going to do it today because I can. So this is a, this song is called Love Me As I Am. It's the third song on the, the EP that I put out in 2020. And I had recorded it and written it a couple years ago and really liked the recording. And this NBC show got wind of it and kept kept saying they were maybe gonna use it. And that went on for a couple years. And you kinda, when you get the opportunity to get a song on a show or something usually helps pay the rent. So we kept holding out and holding out and then um, and then about mid-year, you know, then I just thought people need music, people need something, you know, I wanted to give folks something to listen to and I got tired of waiting, so hopefully it doesn't kill its chances to make its way into the world, but, uh, but I feel like songs are, you know, you don't write them to sit in your closet for years and years, you, you, wanna, you wanna share them while you're here, so uh, it's called Love Me As I Am. When your mouth has grown bloody From biting on your tongue When you've suffered accusations When they say that you're the one Who has robbed them of some magic They believe belong to them There's a cadence in the background Sounds like I don't give a damn But I know you do And I do too So if you're gonna love me Love me as I am Don't try to change me Cause I'm not that kind of man It hurts too much to be alone So if you're gonna love me Love me as I am If you're gonna love me Like a book you'd only open Whenever there was time upon my pages They fade before your eyes Why did you use the word forever If you were only stopping by It's okay, it's fine Whatever lies So if you're gonna love me I am Don't try to change me Cause I'm not that kind of man And the only thing I really know Is it hurts too much to be alone So if you're gonna love me you're gonna love me love me as I am love me as I am love me as I am Thank you guys. Thank you, Stephen. 
Um, man, so pretty r relatively early on, you pivoted into uh, into doing virtual shows and really putting time and effort and thought into putting on a, a good virtual show, uh, themed shows, and you know, decent and good production value behind them. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what that experience has been like? More importantly, what do you have coming up? I know, I mean, you're you're still you're doing this on a very regular basis. What's what's coming up for you in the in the sure. virtual world? Yeah, well, you know, it's because we had the book coming out. We had a, a, a book tour scheduled and we had secured all these cool places, a Civil War Museum in Lawrence, Kansas, and an art gallery in Iowa, and a brewery in, in Milwaukee, and all these. I wanted to, to, I wanted to do the book tour not in traditional venues. So I tried to take some of that into the, the that's, that's why we started so quickly with the virtual touring, because uh, whereas, you know, venues had to cancel but we had ticketed the whole thing ourselves, and we said we thought people are really in need you know they're home so is there a way to make this tour happen um for them some and we looked feel like you just part of the charm of a live show you know yeah we of people and I've, I, I've gotten to know people in some ways better on a virtual tour than i would have on a traditional tour because even because the meet and greets we did we did meet and greets on zoom beforehand and you're sort of have that intimate exchange of staring into each other's houses you know so um uh and and although we uh, you know i look forward to playing live again we just decided to go up with a with a virtual winter tour because here we are you know we're still we're still in the same situation where there's a, a need for entertainment and I want to work, it's good for my soul to, I'm a deadhead at heart. I want to build different shows all the time. So starting February 4th, we'll uh, launch back in and, and do, um, we have a tour schedule for the next couple of months. And it's, you know, it's, it's the shows are at different times, you know, to kind of accommodate different regions of the world and people in Europe and people on the West Coast. So you see like, some shows are on a Sunday afternoon, some are on a Thursday night, some are on Ireland time, you know. Um, but we try to, over the course of a tour, offer offer a little bit of all that and uh, just push myself creatively to play things out of my comfort zone, which is even leads into a set like the one I'm doing today. I would never be comfortable playing four new songs in a row, especially because they're mostly ballads other than I've had enough. and. But that's part of the charm of what I think we're all going through right now is who else can I be that I haven't been at some point in my life? How can I challenge myself to to be a little less afraid of, of things that won't kill you, you know? Like of, of daring to to take a chance on something, you know? It's cool. Like I'm I feel braver than I felt a year ago. And that's a good thing, you know? Good. So. Good. I mean, I, I feel, I get that sense as well. I mean, we're, this is out of our comfort zone. This is the first, this is the second day that I've ever worked in the cutting room and Andrew and I are on the road doing these in different places, which is, which is wonderful. I mean, you know, it's, it's something that we're trained to do, but we were both at our home studio for, for years, you know, and now being out on the road and do, doing this on a mobile basis is, uh, it, feel, it feels wonderful, but certainly breaking out of a comfort zone. So it, it's great on our side as well, man. Thank yeah, you for, well, for doing that. Yeah, I can tell that too. You guys, you guys are doing a great job. What a, what a uh, you know, uh, and, and I've got to talk to Pam from Show X beforehand and just like the way that you're coming together to bring people music and, and such good such a great slate of artists that you've that you've been doing it's uh, I, I appreciate it as a as a consumer of that stuff so thanks nice. for doing it thank you man well we've got a great crowd tuned in right now and a lot of uh we've got one more song coming up from you today Stephen. what do you what do you feel like playing last today yeah so this was this was supposed to be on the ep it's an old song and when we tried to put it out somehow it got a uh, it got flagged by a, a record label laying some claim to this song which is annoying but uh but so we put it out on our on our website anyway and it's it's a song um it's the only song i've ever written with my wife and she says you know we didn't write this together but but the chorus is is something she texted to me word for word and so um 
you know, but uh, like a lot of people, you have two things that happen on a year like this. You either are with, uh, you're either alone a lot more than you're used to being alone, or you're with people in smaller spaces a lot more than you're used to being with them. And, and for me, I have four daughters, and it's, it's a wild thing to suddenly, after 20 years of being on the road, to be home every single day. Um, and I wrote this one at a moment when I was constantly in motion. And yet when I started singing it again around the house this year, it really, it really hit me hard. And so, um, because you can be close to someone in proximity and still feel like you're a thousand miles apart, you know? And so that's what this is about. It's called Howl at the Moon. said I was lying absolutely as we left it at that and then both went to bed and how many times could you take that bed before you wake up one day in a sea of regret I think it needs to be said I guess I'm just tired I know you are too I wanted to call And tell you I love you I'm really just tired I wish I could rest This heart's busy pumping Blood to my chest What happened to 16 and romance And trying to hook up after the dance We both do a lot And we do nothing too Every day well It's more than just a list to get through And how many times Could you take that bet Before you wake up one day And your whole life's a mess I think it needs to be said I guess I'm just tired I know you are too, but I wanted to call and tell you I love you. I'm really just tired. I wish we could rest. This heart's busy pumping blood to my chest.
Right. Thank cool. you, guys. <clears throat> Stephen, thank you for coming and doing this. We appreciate it. This is a wonderful way to start off the Tuesday at the Cutting Room. And, uh, and best of continued luck on the book. It's out there in the world and, and on the virtual touring. February 4th is the, the next, starts the next phase of virtual touring. Thank you for doing our virtual thing here today. People are tuned in and having a wonderful time. So we appreciate it very much. It's an honor. Thank th you know. Thank you for for asking me, guys. It, it's really uh, I appreciate it so much. It's nice to be invited. So thank you. All right, you. man. Well, have a safe drive back, and uh, we'll see you see you again hopefully very 